do you know how traps work? There are numerous traps out there for the various animals you may be trying to catch, but all traps work on the same principle and all traps have two components in common. Every trap has something that's attractive and every trap has something that is restrictive. Now that is to say every trap has something that gets the animal to the trap, that's the attractive part, and every trap has something that keeps the animal from leaving the trap, that's the restrictive part. If you grew up watching cartoons like I did, you know what this is. This is a mouse trap. It's an old school, spring loaded, Tom and Jerry style mouse trap. Here's how it works you put a little bit of cheese there, and then you pull the lever back, set the spring, and you wait. A mouse comes along, tries to eat that cheese, but he trips the mechanism, and then the lever catches the mouse. There you see the two components at play. You have something attractive, which is the cheese, and it gets the mouse to the trap. And then you have something restrictive, the lever mechanism. The ironically named lever mechanism, because that mouse is not leaving. Have you ever had a problem with flies in your house? I did a while ago, and I got fly tape. Here's how fly tape works. It's the cylinder, and you pull the tape out. It's a long, sticky piece of ribbon, and then you hang that tape somewhere, like by a window. The flies come along, maybe because they smell something good, they assume there's something delicious around there. It's not delicious, trust me. And it gets stuck to the tape. That fly is not leaving, and then it dies there. It's the same principle and the same components applied differently from the mousetrap. There is something attractive, that is the aroma of whatever, and then there's something restrictive, it's the glue that keeps the fly from leaving. So you know how to catch flies, you know how to catch mice, do you know how to catch a monkey? Monkey traps are diabolically ingenious. They work on the same two principles, there's something attractive and there's something restrictive, but here's how it goes. What they do to catch a monkey is they take a barrel of peanuts, and that barrel is immovable. It's either bolted to the ground or it's really weighed down. A monkey cannot move that barrel. And what they do is they cut holes in the sides of the barrel so a monkey can reach in and grab the peanuts. That's the attractive part. The monkey is attracted to peanuts. Now here's the diabolical part. Those holes in the sides of the barrel they're big enough that a monkey can stick an empty hand in, but they're too small for a monkey to pull a fistful of peanuts out. And that's the restrictive part of the trap. Sort of. Well, part of the restrictive component is that the hole is too small for a monkey to get his hand out. And part of the restrictive component is the fact that the barrel is immovable, otherwise the monkey would be able to drag it through the jungle. But the real restrictive component of this trap is the fact that the monkey will not drop those peanuts. If he did drop those peanuts, he'd be able to pull his empty hand out and go on his merry way. But the fact that he keeps that fist, he keeps holding on to the peanuts, that's truly the restrictive part. To the outside world, it may look as if this barrel full of peanuts is what's holding on to the monkey, it's what's restricting him, but in reality, it's that monkey's inability, nay, his refusal to let go of peanuts that is really holding him back. You may hear that and think, stupid monkey, if you just let go of those peanuts, you'd be free. You're technically correct, but be careful before you judge that monkey. Are you really smarter than he is? What peanuts are you holding on to that in reality are holding you back? Maybe you've been working the same job for a while and some people have advised you you ought to move on. On one hand you think this job is not challenging and it doesn't pay all that well. But on the other hand, it doesn't pay that badly either. Living expenses are covered and it's stable. There is zero chance you're going to get fired. You know you're capable of so much more. You know you could be doing something far more significant with your time and your talents, but you're afraid to move on, aren't you? Because that boring stability is oh so comforting. You see, you're holding on to peanuts, friend, but your inability to drop those peanuts, nay, your refusal to drop those peanuts, is what's holding you back. It's what's got you trapped. 
Maybe you got out of a relationship some time ago and you're convinced your ex will take you back. Your friends think you need to move on. Hey, we got somebody in mind who'd be perfect for you. Not asking for any commitment, not asking for any marriage, just meet the person. But you can't, can you? Because you're convinced your ex will take you back. It may happen at any time. See, you're holding on to peanuts, friend. But in reality, it's your inability, nay, your refusal to let go of your peanuts that's got you trapped. Think about all you're missing out on. What could you have? What could you do if you weren't holding on to those peanuts all this time? And let me ask you this. Those peanuts you've been holding on to, did they satisfy? Did they give you what you were hoping for? I'm guessing not. Because that's the funny thing about peanuts. In the end, they amount to <laughs> peanuts. And there you are, refusing to let them go. And that's what's got you trapped. Do yourself a favor, friend. Drop those peanuts and move on. Keep it tuned here to lastrights.com for more speaking tips and the occasional bit of life coaching. That's last dash w-r-i-t-e-s dot com and if you follow me on social media or sign up for my email list you'll be made aware of these videos as they become available and together we that's you and i we will lay boring speeches to rest by giving them the last rites <laughs>